And now, let's all play What's My Line? And now, live from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And now a gentleman whose ninth book, Letters to a Conservative, is rapidly moving up on the sales chart. He, however, himself has always been in first place, Mr. Steve Allen. Thank you, Arlene. Thank you, Arlene. And next, a young lady who is the co-star of the Trials of O'Brien program, which is, uh, incidentally... <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> Accidentally. Yes. <laughs> Which eventually, if I shut up, will move to uh, Friday nights on CBS. Lovely Miss Joanna Barnes. Thank you, Steve. And speaking of books like yours, our next panelist has written a delightful one called Laugh Day, Mr. Bennett Sir. I don't think Steve mentioned the fact that Joanna also writes a syndicated column about interior decorating, isn't it? Called Touching Home. Very good, too. Thank you. And here is our panel moderator, that virtuoso of verbosity, Mr. John Charles Pop Daly. <laughs> I must say, Bennett, you've got... Nina Elizabeth started off on the wrong foot. She heard about the uh, fact that you talked of her last week, and I went up to Harkness Pavilion to see Nina Elizabeth tonight, and she's sitting there with a pink bow in her hair, all ready to go on the show. I had to tell you oh, she couldn't sure. do it. Well, Miss Barnes and Steve, it's nice to have you with us tonight. Thank John, you. John, I think we can guarantee you some rather interesting minutes, because we've got some really interesting people, as well as interesting occupations here. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the program. But right now, let's meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Bertha. May Anna. Is that right? Uh, Miss or Mrs. Mayana? Mrs. Mayana. Mrs. Mayana. And where are you right. from? From New London. New London, Connecticut. Connecticut. Oh, That's nice right. to have you with us. Uh -huh. Mrs. Mayana, may I present the panel? Uh -huh. Now, would you join me over here and we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Panel, we can tell you that Mrs. Mayanna is salaried and deals in a service, and we will begin with Steve Allen. Mrs. Mayanna, uh, I couldn't hear you speak too clearly. Were you by any chance born in some other part of the world than the United States? Yes. Would that fact, John, be at all relevant? Would that be a helpful clue in trying no. to find out what the service is? No, it would not, no, Steve. It would not. One down and nine to go, Miss Barnes. Do you perform this service equally for both men and women? Not equally. Well, let us say it can, be, it can be given equally to men or women, although we won't guarantee that the numbers are exactly the same. Would you be more likely to perform it for men? For, for men? Yes, this yes. service. Would this service in any way um, benefit them, change their appearance in a, to a more handsome appearance? No. That's mm. two down a date to go, Mr. Surf. Mrs. Mayanna, of course, that's, the atomic submarines and many other submarines are based in New London. Can I eliminate the Navy Yard from your activities? Yes. You have nothing to do with it? No. Uh, is the service that you perform one in which you touch people? Sometimes. I would say here that this, so as you're not misled, uh, is not necessarily uh, mandatory. We will agree that in the process of uh, giving the service that uh, Mrs. Mayanna may, may touch, touch people. But yeah. it's, not it's not a necessary part of the service. No. 
do you uh, do your service where other people can watch you? Sometimes, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Does the service involve anything beside people? Do you do something to an object, like an automobile or plumbing or something of that sort? Yes. You do? Yes. Would it have anything whatever to do with transportation? Yes. Would the, is, the tra is the vehicle that you serve four-wheeled? No. No. That's three down and seven to go, Miss French. Not four. Well, uh, is it perhaps uh, a vehicle that might be ever seen on the water? No. That's four down and six to go, Mr. Allen. Sometimes. Is, now, I would say uh, here... Sometimes. Yeah, it, sometimes, sometimes it could be. We'll yes. take that back, I think, yeah. Arlene, because it... Yes. Well, in this instant case... It won't help case, me any, but I think it's nice of you to take it back. In this instant mm -hmm. case, we would, we would probably give you the no, but I think overall we would have to agree sometimes. you might see it sometime. Probably. Well, is it a vehicle that might ever be in the air? Yes. Uh, therefore, John, when you were saying sometimes, were you thinking of amphibious planes? Mm -hmm. Uh, do you do something in your service that has to do with planes? Yes. Um, you do something other than pilot planes? Yes. Do you have anything to do with the course uh, that a plane may take? No. Nope. Four down and six to go, Mr. Allen. <laughs> You're not a stewardess on a small airline, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I said you're not. Uh, are you, uh, do you do anything mechanical in nature? Mm, no. Nope. Five down and five to go, Miss Barnes. Would you dress differently when you're doing this from the way that we see you now here? Yes. That's the way you looked at me. <laughs> 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 uh, would it be anything, in, uh, would we recognize immediately your function in the widest sense if we saw you in this outfit? No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Manor, do you have anything to do with the building of airplanes? No. Nothing at all. Seven about. down and three to go, Miss Francis. Well, she certainly doesn't have anything to do with the dismantling of them. <laughs> um, do you have anything to do with the service that is given on planes? No. You mean here the servicing of an aircraft? Yes, the service no. to an aircraft. Eight to down the passengers two? on an aircraft. Mr. Allen? Do you work more in an office-type uh, context than in, say, a hangar or a field or something of that sort? I mean, out on the field. No. no. Nine down and one to go, Miss Barnes. Oh, maybe she, maybe she has something. We have a training. You may have 30 seconds for a concert. Training or maintenance? Did you rule out maintenance? Maintenance is ruled out because that's out service. But, but could but she train them in any way? She serves people. Maybe she has something to do with selling. But mostly men. She doesn't work in an office. She can't sell tickets. Nothing. What do you do for men that you can't do Take for ladies? Pilot. 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 No, that's out. Hmm. All right. Conference I'm over. sorry. You get the last one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the death blow. Uh, do you have anything to do with any sort of training which applies to you? Yes. Like it, yes. Uh, applicable to flight? Yes. yes. Uh, do you train personnel who work inside the airplane. Yeah, I'm going to throw it over. What's the most obvious thing in the world out? Are you a flight instructor? I would like you to meet a flight oh. instructor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Mayanner is with the Pilgrim Aviation Company and runs a flight school at New London, Connecticut. She admits happily to being 65, proposes to go on teaching other people how to fly till she's 70, and bless her, has recently returned from two years with the Peace Corps down in Peru, holds a degree in metallurgy. She's quite a remarkable woman. Quite a remarkable woman. What did you say? Pilgrim Aviation and Airlines. Aviation and Airlines. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> well, that's a remarkable career, and thanks a lot for sharing it with us. Nice to have you with us.
I forgot, and Mrs. Mayanna is also a parachute rigger and a helicopter pilot. You know, a few other little things to add to it. All right, let's see what we can do with our next challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? O'Neill. Mercier, right, sir? Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Mr. Mercier, where are you from? In the, from Victoriaville, Quebec. Victoriaville, Quebec. Yes. Nice to have you with us. May I present the panel? Now, will you join me over here, please? And uh, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Panel, we can tell you that Mr. Messier is salaried and deals in a product, and we'll begin with Arlene Francis. Mr. Messier, is it a useful product? Yes, it is. Is it used by both men and women? Sometimes. Could it be used outdoors? Yes. And indoors? Yes. Could I hold it in my hand? Yes. If, I, if it were serving its function, would I put it in my hand? Yes. Would I ever put it on my person? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Allen. Would Arlene put it on anybody else's person? <laughs> no. Because I know Arlene. <laughs> Two down and eight to go, Miss Buck. <laughs> uh, does this thing have any moving parts, this product of yours? Mm, no. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Mercier, is this product in any way seasonal? Used possibly more at Christmas time than other times? No. Uh, small conference. <laughs> we have a sticky wicket here. We're living in times that are quite <laughs> remarkable in that actually seasonal characteristics that used to obtain several, you know, years ago, a couple of decades ago, don't necessarily obtain any more. With Mr. Messier's permission, I will give you a qualified yes as to what might be normally expected if you ask the question of seasonal character, but at the same time, we do not deny that the, the product is involved on a 12-month basis. Will that be all right with you, sir? I see. <laughs> not to. <laughs> no, no, no. We're in the same boat you are, Mr. Messier. <laughs> uh, Mr. Messier, is there anything decorative or about this product. Will you come again, please? Is it decorative? <laughs> is, it, is it pretty? Does it, does it make pe things look nicer when you put it on? No. no. Four down and six to go, Miss Fred. Uh, Monsieur Mercier, is it anything that is consumed? Yes, it is. Now, this is in the context <laughs> that it can be used up it, in time. It can be used up. However, it is not something you put in your mouth. No, yes, it is not something you put in your mouth, no. When I put it in, when I hold it in my hand, uh, is it soft? Mm, no, no, miss. I'm no. sorry to hear that. No, terrible. Five down and five to go, Mr. Allen. This uh, hard handheld held object, is it uh, at all metal? Nope. Six down and four to go, Miss Barnes. Was any part of this product ever living? Not in no <coughs> sense of animal life, no. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Sir. Is, uh, you say it was not living in animal life. Did well, I we also eliminate vegetable life, too? Well, here we go back to something better, which we've always accepted. Uh, we'll agree almost anything that grows can be considered to have been alive at one time. I just wanted to define the answer for Miss Barnes, who's not used to our, our uh, patterns that uh, I anticipated the answer had the character of animal life in it that she was looking for, so I gave it that way, you know. Yes, it, Mr. Mercier, is there, anything, is there anything dangerous about this product? No, mister. <laughs> Eight down and two to go, Miss Francis. Is there anything pleasurable about the product? Yes. Is it something that what one might use uh, to amuse oneself or someone else? Yes. Uh, could it be used in a game? Yes. Uh, is it a game that anyone might, if you'll pardon the expression, gamble on? 
we would not want to admit that we are aware of any gambling, but we would have to agree that... Uh, right? We're quite ready to admit, Arlene, that those who have a will to it might possibly be doing it behind our backs. Well, in that case, because very little is done behind your back, I can rule out anything such as dice. It has nothing to do with anything like dice. Uh, is it a ball of any kind? No. no. Nine down and one to go, Mr. Allen. Is the fact that you are from Quebec relevant? I didn't... I didn't get your... Is thought. the fact that you are from Quebec relevant? Relevant. I would say relevant, yes, in a very tangential way. I'm thinking of some cold country type sport, such as uh, well, lacrosse or hockey or something of that sort. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would say that you... When I said hockey... I'd say relevancy there. There was, uh, there was a fist fight in the balcony. <laughs> People were struck dumb. Uh, and some of them probably came in that way. But do you have anything to do with the game of hockey, then? Yes. You make hockey pucks. No! You just missed it. You just missed it. We'll count that as having been one, because I think you would have gotten That's very good, because that was a tough one. Actually, uh, Mr. Messier is with uh, Maylot and Frayers. Incorporated, who naturally up from that part of the country. I, I guess you're the biggest hockey stick makers. Yes, that's right. <laughs> How do your sticks hold out when people hit other people over the heads with them? Mr. They Mike? break. They, they break. break the yes. heads of the sticks. <laughs> One thing that interested me that Mr. Messier told me: hockey sticks for professional play have uh, fiberglass. Fiberglass. Where reinforced. Otherwise, they're made of ash, you know. But uh, they put fiberglass in them when when they're going for the professional business. For more durability. Yeah. More, uh... Yes, sir. They bend a little. They bend a little. Mm -hmm. So when you they get one over the head, it bends before it breaks. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank I'm you, sir. It's very nice thank having you, you with us. <laughs> we'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, this message. The special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which the panel is always blindfolded. Blindfolds in place, panel? Yes, yes. Sir. Good. Will you enter, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? as you know, a different form of questioning, one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin with uh, Bennett Surf. Well, those raucous wolf whistles, whistles from the audience would usually mean that the mystery guest is a very pretty girl who is recognizable. Are you? Uh, well, sugar, I don't know. It just depends. Yes, I think that is a big fat yes, Miss Francis. Are you at the present time, or are you about to open in a new picture? Uh, well, uh, I might say yes. Mr. Allen? It's not gone with the wind, I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, following Arlene's tack, uh, <laughs> which our guest just sat on, I'm afraid, uh, I, am I correct in assuming you are not from the American South? Oh, well, I look. <laughs> no, I, I, uh, je suis uh, Francais. I am French. I'm sorry, I cannot do the American accent very well. But the answer to your question is yes, Stephen. I'd hold everything else in reserve. <laughs> Miss Barr. Those two young ladies up there. Uh, you are about to open in a new film. Are you... Uh, well known for your romantic leads in pictures? Uh, well, uh, no, I'd say no. No, I don't think so. One down and nine to go, Mr. <laughs> Sir. Uh, there's, a, there's a new picture opening at Radio City Music Hall this, this week. Would you be involved in those proceedings? Uh, I am a little involved, uh, yes. Ah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, is that the cat picture? Yes. Oh, is it, oh. uh, Patty? J no. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, Haley Mills? <laughs> Haley Mills, is right. <laughs> Do that. <laughs> what, 
what is what is the name of the picture? The, it's it's called uh, that darn cat. That darn cat. <laughs> but, I thought it was Drat the cat too, and I played tricks in my mind. Mm. But I'd read it in the it's, papers. It's confusing. There's so many Drat ways you can say it. That darn cat. Open <laughs> that's it's been a big year one. for cats. Drat the cat, the pussy cat, and now your cat. <laughs> <laughs> and my agent Seymour cat. She was. Here. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we were wondering, we thought it might be Miss Mills, who was at Radio City, or it might be Lillian Gish, who's a few years <laughs> older, who was opening an annual tomorrow night. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm afraid once they got on the film, Sadie, we were kind of lost. But uh, may I say that, uh, of course, your family is, you don't need to be told, towers in the field of your chosen profession, and I must say they're very proud of you. They should be, too. Thanks very much oh, for coming thank to you see very us. Much. Nice to have you with us. <laughs> thank you. I think we give you some honors tonight. Congratulations, panel. We'll have another contestant after this word. All right, now will our final contestant enter and sign in, please? Judy? Story, right? All right. Is it... Uh, Miss or Mrs. Story? Mrs. Mrs. Story, where are you from, Mrs. Story? New York City. New York City. May I present the panel? And now if you'll join me over here, Mrs. Story, we'll let the uh, audience at home and the audience in the theater know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel, we tell you frankly, since time is short, that this is a tricky one. We'll give you the usual information that Mrs. Story is self-employed and deals in a product. And we'll begin with Miss Joanna Barr. The product which you deal in, is it used by both men and women? Hmm. Matter of speaking, mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Uh, is it small enough so I might hold it in my hand? Yes. Um, is it uh, anything which, with which I might change my appearance? No. 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 That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Oh. Sir. <laughs> Mrs. Story, is this uh, product consumable? No. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Would one find it in the home, Mrs. Story? Yes. Uh, would one find it more in one part of the home than another? No. No, nope, I wouldn't Anywhere. think so. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Allen. Is it smaller than a bread box? <laughs> Sometimes. It Actually, grows. we yeah, but we'd, it, 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 we would have to agree it's smaller than a bread box. Sometimes, probably all the time, really. I see. When it's being used, does one hold it in one's hand? Or lay hands on it? No. Well, you, with your permission, Miss Story, you would lay hands on it to use it, yes. Since you said, or lay hands on it. Does it have metal parts? Yes. Could it be called mechanical? Does it have moving parts? No. Four down and six to go, Miss Bond. If I wanted to buy this, would I go to one particular type of store rather than another? Not no. particularly so, no, Mr. Sir. When you use this product, Mrs. Story, is it applied to the, some part of the person? Well, I've got to turn the cards over because we're running out of time. Because actually it is applied, but not to the person. Because Mrs. Story makes coats for dogs. <laughs> <laughs> out of... Out of snake skin... Plastic raincoats, velvet, and all kinds of things. And at Christmas time, she makes a, a, a Santa Claus coat for a dog, you know, in red, regular Santa Claus thing, so that the season has a grand time. Thanks very much, Mr. Story. Nice to have had you with us on what's fun. <laughs> and just to clear up... Just to clear up one point, since the time is running out, when you said a special kind of store, I couldn't say yes, because you can get them in Lord and Taylor's, Hammaker, Schlemmer's, a lot of those, of the big good stores, you see. And I've used up all the time with everybody's permission. Nice to have you with us, Miss Barnes and Thank Steve. You. Great to have you back again. Uh, thanks very much for being with us on What's My Line? What's My Line is a CBS television network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Potman. This is Johnny Olsen speaking.